All right, we're back with the second part of our data wrangling session. Uh, once again, this is Ryan Womack, data librarian at Rutgers. And now we're going to look at the pipe. The pipe is a key concept in our studio. Uh, the name of the package that provides the pipe is called Magritter, Magrit R. Magritte R, and if you are familiar with the painting, this is not a pipe, right? So well known in the history of art and made a jump to R as well. Uh, so maybe that's just you know, a bad, bad pun, a cheap pun, but it is what it is. Uh, Magritter, you know, you actually not really invoke commands from Magritter so much. Uh, Magritter just provides this functionality of using this special sequence of characters, which we call a pipe. All right. You can look at the reference for Magritter, but you know, just just to mention, like in in daily use, you know, you you're not there's not a whole bunch of commands that come with Magritter. It's just sort of always there in the background. Uh, the the special character that I'm talking about is this three stroke combination of percent sign greater than sign percent. So if you type those three things together that has a special meaning in the tidyverse. And we refer to that as the pipe. Now, the reason it's a pipe is it's like a Linux pipe, if you're familiar with that environment. Uh, it passes things from one place to another, or it's like a plumbing pipe, not so much a smoking pipe. Um, all right, so that sounds abstract. Uh, perhaps surreal, but what does it mean in practice? Uh, line 126, we, we see the pipe in action for the first time. Um, sorry, uh, line 119. Um, we have, we've pivoted our data, and in this hypothetical example, it turns out, Okay, I'm only interested in just one year of data, one recent year that's relatively complete, which is 2017. So I would like to create an extract of the data that's just the 2017 data. And so how do I do that? I'm going to create a new object called Gender Data 2017. That's on line 119. Uh, what is it? How is it going to be defined? Use the assignment operator. And then I can actually roll over to the next line uh, and say, I'd like to start with gender data two, and then using the pipe, filter the data for year equals to 2017. So it's actually this uh, three line unit here that will execute that command. So let me just run that lines 119 to 121. So now we have gender data 2017, and it looks like this, right? So all of the years are the same. They're only 2017. Um, we can see we actually cut down the number of observations from more than 10 million down to 164,000, right? Which is um, the number of countries times the number of indicators in the data set. We'll, we'll, we'll see the pipe again. I'll talk through it again in just a minute, but let's, let's keep rolling. So now this year column is redundant because I know that everything in the data is already 2017. So just to be clean, I'm going to remove it in line 123. That's our bracket notation again. All right, now that I've done my filtering, I'd like to get a kind of presentation version of the data 
um, and spin it back out into a wide format. So we saw a pivot longer. Now we are going to pivot wider. And in this example, I'm using the pipe style of writing the command. So I'm going to create something new. I'm going to call it gender data 2017 wide. And how is it going to be formed? Use the assignment operator take gender data 2017 and then so I always think mentally I think of when I see the pipe I think and then right it's like and then on the next line this thing happens take gender data 2017 and then pivot it wider uh, take the names of the variables from indicator name so each one of these will become a new variable column and take the values of the data from the value column. That's relatively straightforward. So I'll run that little suite. And now we have something called gender data 2017 wide. And it looks like this. A, a bunch of variables, right? We have actually uh, 625 variables if you look at our summary there um, with 263 observations so that's all the countries and regions in the data set and so it looks something like this now this is the kind of thing you could then export to an excel file or csv file and have something that's a little more maybe browsable of how this data set works I'll mention also you, there is a sort of built-in data browser in um, our studio. You can click on the objects in this top right panel, and it'll pull up the data browser. It's still, you know, it's not that great uh, in terms of actually looking at a moderate amount of data, but it's it's better than nothing. All right, so I also want to mention here that, you know, there are many other features uh, that are really quite useful. Um, so we have functions that will do things like drop the not available data. That's drop NA, starting on line 131. You'll have functions that look for complete cases, cases where all the variables are present. Um, kind of the obverse of drop NA. Um, and I'm, I, I won't really bother to run those here, but you know the examples are in the code. Uh, in this case, because we have so many variables, um, all the cases get dropped if you run that command. So be careful to, you know, not wipe out your original data set when you do that. But you know, those convenience functions are are throughout the tidyverse, right? There's a lot of really nice uh, functions like that. Okay, so I want to uh, dwell here for a moment on a different concept that's another strength of the tidyverse. And this is the concept of nested models. So if you think about, if you think back to our graphics unit, we saw lattice, uh, had this real strength in making it very easy to work with groups, you know, slice your data into groups and and plot it by group. Uh, you can think of nested models in the same way for working with data. Um, and I'm going to start with a very simple example here. Uh, there is a classic or um, archaic or however you want to describe it uh, data set that's in R. That's called Empty Cars, and it is a listing of a 30 some cars from the 1970s um, and their characteristics, their horsepower, their miles per gallon. And in particular right now, I'm focused on the cylinders of the car. So in this data set, there's three types, four cylinder cars, six cylinder cars, and eight cylinder cars. Those kind of form natural groups, right? If you think of those are related to engine size or the power of the car. Uh, so we might want to keep those groups in our analysis. T 
tidyverse makes it easy for us to do that. So I'm going to create a nested model. I'm going to call it empty cars nested. And I base it off of the empty cars data. And then what do I do? I group it by cylinder. And then what do I do? I'm going to nest the data. And we'll see in just a second what nesting means. Um, so you, uh, if you've seen a, a couple of these pipe examples now, you can see that uh, it does make the, the syntax, the logical steps of what's happening clearer in a lot of ways. Uh, it may not be for every purpose, you know, um, some in some cases a, you know, parentheses type of syntax may may work better for you. But this pipe really, you know, it gives a readability to your your code and, and your process that is quite nice. OK, so what does this empty cars nested look like once we've created it? If I just, you know, take a look, say empty cars nested, it's a tibble that's three by two. And it's got three groups. It's grouped by cylinder. Uh, and then what we have is um, the data itself is sort of masked in this view. We have the groups, cylinder six, cylinder four, cylinder eight, and then the data associated with those seven cars with six cylinder engines, but we don't actually see the data because it's nested inside. Um, there is a way to see the data, which is to use this sort of relatively complicated um, element notation where we um, have multiple brackets. Um, I believe this would be a way to do it. No. There we go. OK, so the, the double brackets, <clears throat> and I'll copy this into the code so that you can see what this is. Peak at column 2, row 1 in detail. Um, so because it's nested, we use double brackets. And so we're saying in the in the original presentation, uh, we saw that the data column was was column two, and element one was uh, this first row, this this um, tibble of seven by ten. So I find it a little confusing to remember exactly um, what's being referred to there, but it is a way to pull out that seven by ten matrix of the. In this case, the six-cylinder engines, cars statistics. Um, all right, so you, you, you don't want to use the nestedness to just make your life more complicated, though. It does make your life easier if you are interested in those groups. So we can do something like on line 152, we can take our nested data and we can apply something to it that will work through each group separately and give us useful information that retains the grouping. Uh, and this is using the syntax called mutate. Uh, mutate is a fancy way of saying let's create a new variable or let's modify a variable. Um, the, the syntax inside the parentheses is, you know, that's just something that you have to um, kind of get used to for the different cases that you're working with. I won't really talk through that, but uh, we are essentially applying a linear regression of the miles per gallon of the car versus the weight um, to our data. And that we're calling it, we're naming the variable the model. Um, now, the fact that we're mutating on a nested on nested data means that when we run this, the output retains the nested uh, character. So if we look at the uh, 
short view of of things we see we've added a new column called model and we can retrieve that model column by using our dollar sign notation so that will show us actually the regression coefficients for each group All right so we've got three different regressions the weight has a different role to play for the different size engines um, and we see that structure clearly preserved um, that dollar sign notation also implies right that we can do something like this we can say empty cars nested dollar sign data and what that will do is print out each of the data frames that are present uh, in the data by group now I'm not going to go further into the nesting than that but just that it is this really nice um, feature that that we can apply anytime we're, we're interested in preserving group structure across lots of operations. Okay, so now um, now we're kind of into the heart of the of the session uh, and the sort of master package. Um, the one that really sells people on Tidyverse is uh, dplyr. Uh, so dplyr, I'll show you the website dplyr has five simple verbs that are very powerful. Uh, the first one we've actually already seen. Actually, we've seen a couple of these in context already. So mutate, as it says, adds new variables that are functions of existing variables. Select picks variables based on their names. Filter picks cases based on their values. And then we have summarize and arrange, which help us uh, analyze and present the data. Now, within each of these um, major elements, there are additional options. So, for example, if I look at mutate, um, there are arguments that I can use to modify uh, and mutate in a specific way. Um, I can also apply functions like ranking or summing. Um, and because it's, it's a tidyverse function and it respects all these other kinds of arrangements, um, you can point one mutate command at a complex data set and just, you know, go directly to your results without um, a number of intermediate st stages. So let me just show you the examples that I have in the code. I won't go too deep into this. Um, here's another example of mutate without a nested model, but just a direct mutation. We're going to add a new variable to our gender data, and we're going to call it GDP ratio. The, we simply apply mutate and we say GDP ratio is uh, this defined by this formula. Now in this case, the, this is a real data set with these long variable names. Um, I'm enclosing them in these uh, backtick quotes because uh, otherwise the spaces within the variable name would cause a problem. Um, I'm dividing by 10,000 just because that's a convenient way to scale the data so that it's um, relatively readable. And I'm just dividing GDP by fertility rate, essentially. So that's the ratio of GDP to fertility, which is what I'm going to uh, focus on in this example. And I believe I'm not going to have to drop in a data now that I've cleaned this. So I'm going to skip line 176. So if we plot that data, uh, we now see a relatively even scatter. There, there's a 
couple of countries there that have uh, very high ratios, many, many, many with a very low GDP to fertility ratio. Um, I'm not trying to make a big argument about what this data means, but uh, just using it as a, a small example of working through our data set. Uh, I'm going to generate another um, categorical value variable um, because I want to group this data into the countries that have a high ratio and a low ratio. And I've picked the ratio of 0.78 because it's roughly sort of in the middle. It's a, it's a good dividing point. Now, if I look at um, what that high ratio looks like, you can see it's just been added as one of our variables. It's actually true and false. So it's um, if the ratio is high, that, that generates a true result. If the ratio is, is less than 0.78, that's a false result. So our categories are whether it matches this criterion of GDP ratio greater than 0.78 or not. Uh, actually, I think I will drop the NA data. So I, I want to drop the not available data because it's going to clean up these um, missing entries and it's going to make our future computations much easier. Right? So I'm going to use drop NA on line 176 and plot the data. You can see there's I've removed some of those entries and now I can directly compute that ratio and I shouldn't have any NA data in the result. Yep, I've got now completely separated into true and false cases. Uh, once I've generated that, I'm going to attach the data set again. Um, we we want to attach after we've created new variables to make sure those new variables get picked up in the attached version. Um, so now we're going to see the select verb. Select is is very straightforward. We're just picking but it has very useful human readable type of um, tools to use, right? So we can select a perfect match, but you can use these things like contains or starts with or ends with any of a list, which will make your life a lot easier, right? You're not, um, forced into speaking uh, computer syntax to match patterns. It takes care of that for you. So I'm selecting the country name um, and the, the indicator that starts with GDP. Right. So I, I want to have this um, small set of data. Uh, let's say I was, you know, looking to filter things and export it, I can generate this small filtered data set. And what is the result? Is the variables are only those that start with GDP. So G current GDP, GDP per capita, converted into constant dollars, etc. And also our GDP ratio. So I've asked it to retrieve two things. One is the column with country name. We need that to identify what we're, what the variables are about. And then all the variables that start with GDP. And we could make you know a longer list, a more complex list, but I think you get the idea. And if this was what I wanted to export, I could just use a write CSV function to generate a CSV version of this data saved into my works in, into my file directory. Uh, filter. We've seen an example of filter before. This picks cases based on the values. Uh, so if I, let's say I wanted to find only the countries that had a really high GDP ratio, uh, ratio of GDP for of two fertility of greater than two. I just apply that as a step. 
filter GDP ratio greater than two. And when I take a look at what the result is, um, I've got all my variables now, um, but I have only 38 countries or regions. And you can see they are kind of the OECD type countries. And once again, we could write that data out in line 200. So, I, you know, I think select and filter, they're very straightforward, but, you know, they really work and they're really easy in Tidyverse. They, they're, it, it, it's, it's great how they work. Now we have another one that's a bit more complicated, but very useful, uh, the summarize function. So summarize is just as it says, you want to take multiple variables and reduce them down to something simple. You know, the mean of a variable is a summary statistic, right? Because it, it takes the complexity of hundreds of things and gives you one number that says, well, this is an estimate of what, what we're seeing. So the thing about the summarized function is it lets you be a little specific about how you're computing that. So in line 204, I'm saying I want to create something called the mean uh, that is defined by the function, the mean of the GDP ratio. And in this case, um, you may have to run it with the NA equals RM equals true um, because the mean won't compute if there's not available data. But I think I got rid of my NA data before. So I'm going to just try it without that option and see if it breaks. Oh, okay, so I'm good. That one step that I that I was that I ran before to drop the NAs um, was necessary to clean up this this data. If you don't clean it up there, you might have to run these na.rm equals true commands. They're not actually harmful, right? Because if there are no NAs in the data set, you know, nothing will happen when you run that. So I'll leave one of those in the code to remind you to think about it, uh, and I'll take one out to show you that you don't need it. Okay, so here we've got um, a mean across all the data of 0.86 for the GDP ratio. Now, because it's tidyverse, we can group the data and it will actually respect the groups. So in line 208, I'm just expanding on what we did before by just a bit. And I'm saying let's group by the high ratio. So remember we had two groups, those classified as low and those classified as high. And the mean within the, the low group is only 0.203. The mean within the high group is 2.54. So you know, by separating it that one other degree, we've sort of produced this dramatic difference. And you can also see the numbers that fall into each category. You know, so that's a nice, um, simple, logical statement um, that, that you can also use as building blocks, right, to generate more complicated breakdowns of data, more complicated computations. Uh, so I've given you a link um, to a blog post that talks about uh, fancier ways that you can use this um, summarize function. Because the thing about Tidyverse is everything is a building block that that works uh, works together and you know we can do more complicated examples. There's also the concept of summarize each which um, I didn't go into, but that's what this blog post is for. All right, and now we're down to our final major dplyr verb, which is arrange. And again, pretty simple in its basic application, changes the ordering of rows. So we can arrange the, the data in order of GDP ratio, let's say, descending order of GDP ratio in line 
lines 218 to 20. And so, you know, again, the pipe notation makes it clear that we're just applying this arrange statement to gender GDP. We can make sure that that data has been sorted correctly. Uh, the highest GDP ratio is 12. And then if we just look at the data set on its own, we can see who those high countries are. We have Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Macau, tiny rich countries with the highest ratio of GDP to fertility. And again, whenever you get to a, an object that you're satisfied with, you can write it out, and save it to your workspace. Okay, so that's that's actually the end of what I would call the core of this um, session. Uh, we have seen the bulk of dplyr, and you can mix and match. You can group these things with group by. Uh, there's more information in the vignette dplyr. Um, the vignette command pulls up a longer, uh, more example-rich summary of how to use the package. And we can combine things in two steps. They're called the two-table verbs. And I won't go there here, but look at the vignette two-table. And you can see that you can do... Um, database like join operations um, and there you know there are just really many many possibilities of how you can work with dplyr now we don't have um, a lot left but i'm going to break it into a separate video just for convenience so let me pause here and we'll come back with a third part